Hey guys, welcome to Cleebs Tech. Today we're going to show you how to install your Corsair All-in-One onto your LG A1700 motherboard, as well as previous Intel sockets. First thing we're going to do is pull out the miscellaneous hardware. You're going to have four thumb screws that we're going to use to install the pump. We're just going to put those off to the left for now. We're going to use those later. And once you've got that done, you're going to be left with the uh, hardware to install your radiator and your fans. You can use long screws on the top left to mount the fans of the radiator. Short screws and washers are used for mounting the radiator to case, which we're not going to cover in this video. You have two options for mounting the fans to the radiator. Installed like this, they will pull air through the radiator. And the other option will be to push air through the radiator, which we'll be using since we will be mounting it at the top of our case and want to push the air out of the case. I prefer to get each screw started and then go around and tighten them. This way you're less likely to have to unscrew the first fan before installing the second if you are uh, slightly off position. As far as the direction of the wires go, uh, you want to consider how you're going to do it as far as managing them when installing the radiator into your case. You probably want them positioned towards the back of your motherboard. Now that we've got that done, we're going to get our backplate ready. You want to position the pins on the backplate to match the holes on your motherboard. You want to select the correct standoff for the socket type your motherboard uses. For this video, we are using the LGA1700 standoffs, and certain types of sockets do not require the backplate, so just keep that in mind. The backplate has a paper film covering the adhesive, and we remove that. The adhesive makes it easier to attach the backplate to the motherboard and not fall off while attaching the standoffs as well as you can uh, put it in while it's vertically in your case already, which is nice. Now we're going to line up the pins with the holes in the motherboard and attach the back plate, and then we're going to place it down. Now we're going to select the, uh, the standoffs we're going to use. Make sure you're using the right ones for whatever socket your motherboard has. Then we're going to start screwing them in. You want to get uh, each one started and then tighten them in evenly. Finger tight is all is more than you need. You don't need to uh, pull out the pliers and wrench them in or anything like that. Now we're going to remove the plastic cover over the pump block, which protects the thermal paste. Uh, you don't want to touch this and you don't want to get it on your clothes because it does not wash out very easily. I recommend leaving the cover on until you're ready to attach the pump. As far as the orientation of the hoses go, it doesn't really matter. Whichever is easiest to install or the way you prefer. The uh, direction of the pump cap with the logo can be changed using the supplied Allen wrench in your box. Next, we're going to take our four thumb screws we had set aside earlier. Just like the standoffs, we're going to get each one started and then tighten evenly so that we get a good even mountain pressure. Once again, we don't need to over tighten these things. Once you're done with that, you're going to notice that, that you have two wires coming off the pump. One is the three pin power for the pump, and the other one is the 24 pin plug, which we'll use to connect to the Commander Core RGB controller. We're going to take the three pin connector and plug that into the appropriate header on the motherboard. And we're going to plug it into our CPU optional, but you could also use the pump header or pump fan one or something like that. Each fan has a 4-pin power connector which you can plug into your motherboard or the included controller, as well as an adjustable proprietary connector from Corsair. This is the uh, controller that comes included. As you can see, it has a USB connector as well as a SATA power connector. 
On one side, we're going to have inputs for our fans, and on the other side, we're going to have inputs for our adjustable RGB. And on the end here is the 24-pin connector for your pump block. Next, we're going to take the 24-pin connector from our pump, and we're going to plug it into the uh, controller, just as you see on the screen. Then we're going to take our fans. We're going to take the 4-pin uh, PW1 fan header. We're going to plug it in the side that takes the input for those. Now we're going to take our proprietary connectors for the uh, addressable RGB, and we're going to plug them into the side that's associated with that. Now we're going to take the wires from our commander core and we're going to plug them in. You have a USB connector that's going to go in a header in your motherboard. We're just going to show that right here. You're going to plug it in just as so. Then we're going to take the other end, which is a SATA power. And we're just going to plug that into the SATA power coming from your power supply. And once you have the IQ software installed on your computer, you'll be able to control everything right through that controller. So we're back. We did a little bit of testing here. We put it on our 12700K test bench. And uh, we downloaded the IQ software to control the fans and the pump. We had everything set on the extreme profile, just so that you can, you know, if, as long as you have some decent airflow, this, this should be reflective of how, but uh, you can expect for temperatures to a degree. We ran Cinebench for 30 minutes on uh, all core CPU load. The highest temperatures we saw were about 50 degrees over the ambient temperature in the room. The ambient temperature is about 50 or about 19 degrees and the temperatures we saw were about 69 70 degrees at max so there was a little bit of room for those to uh, to go up without causing any issues uh throttling throttling your uh, cpu or anything like that um lighting looks pretty good i'd say it's a pretty sweet looking fan i uh, kept everything nice and cool overall looks good seems like it works well definitely i uh, can suggest it. it was nice and easy to install if you uh, found this video helpful at all, please uh, consider subscribing. We definitely appreciate it. It'll help us put out more content like this. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.